Hey, it's Ron with the Radiologic Technology.com blog, YouTube channel, Instagram, Pinterest, yada, yada. Uh, this video is just going to be a uh, answer or explanation or opinion piece for a good friend of mine who's a sonographer out there, has an awesome channel. I'll link to it in the comments below. You should go check her out if you're interested in sonography as a career at all. She has a great channel. And I have a, a video posted on my channel titled Radiology Career Application Specialist and What They Do in the Radiology World. And so my favorite sonographer, I should say one of my favorites, I don't offend any of the other sonographers, but uh, she said, I'd love to know your opinion. Uh, what are your opinion is on this type of job? I'm thinking about going into to an application specialist for a certain company. I, I won't say the company's name. Because I'm not promoting anybody anymore. They don't pay me to promote them. I'm not promoting anybody. <laughs> so I, I made some notes. So so let's talk about. So, you know, this is a very common question in the field of radiology. And the, the question is, what what are my career options? What can I do in the field of radiology? Sometimes it's from the educational perspective. You know, I have a bachelor's degree, I have an associate's degree, I have a master's degree. What can I do? Uh, other times it's if I, I have a certificate, I have a license, um, I'm trained on the job or whatever, what can I do? Or I've been in uh, MRI for 20 years and I'm sick of it. What else can I do? That kind of thing. Not not to pick on MRI, but in this particular case, it's a sonographer and, and she's asking, you know, what, what do you think about becoming an application specialist? So when you've been a tech and you've been on the front line a long time, there's a lot of things that can occur. You can get burned out for sure. I've got plenty of talks about that. You can get burned out on the career. You can get burned out on the place you're working. If you're stuck in the town where you live, you don't have a lot of job options. You know, a lot of people say, well, if you don't like where you work, go work somewhere else. Well, that's not always an option for a lot of people. I, I for one, have fallen victim to that uh, myself. But um, there are other options besides just switching jobs uh, and, and moving to another facility and one of them uh, is to become an application specialist. And if you don't know what that means, uh, an app specialist, as it's usually called, um, is a person that travels around to different uh, locations, facilities, and trains staff on how to use the equipment for the vendor. So the app specialist is an employee of the vendor. Um, let's just say CareStream. That's not who this person's talking about, but I'm not promoting CareStream. Uh, let's say you want to you want to be an application specialist for CareStream. Um, you would travel around to different hospitals, doctors' offices, wherever the technologists who use your equipment are, and you your job would be to train them. So let's say uh, you're working for CareStream and you're the app specialist for their new X-ray room, and there's a hospital in California who bought that X-ray room. Part of the whole purchase process in these contract negotiations to buy new equipment is for somebody to come out and train staff on how to use it. Um, obviously, you don't just install the equipment and go, okay, staff, go figure it out, right? Built into the contract to purchase that equipment, the vendor will send out an app specialist to come out and train your staff. Now, that could mean uh, coming out and, and staying for a week in a hotel and training, you know, showing up at the hospital at 8 a.m. and stay until 5 p.m., Typically, it means you, you come throughout the day or you come on different days on different shifts because you have to train the whole staff, which means first, second, third shift, weekend shift. You, you can't just go in from like 10 to 2, Monday through Friday, and expect to catch everybody. You, you come in on different shifts. So a good friend of mine, for example, Eric Harold, uh, who who helped train me in X-ray way back in the day, he went to be an app specialist for C-Arms for a large company. And he would, uh, he had like all the West Coast, I believe. He would travel around. They'd fly him around. He'd stay in hotels, nice expense accounts. You usually get an expense credit card, you know, to pay for your meals and a car if you need it and, you know, whatever. But his job was to go to the hospitals on a set schedule and he'd set up in the OR basically. And as technologists, we would, th those who use the CRM would, would, kind of rotate through while he was up there to get trained on the C-arm that he was training us on. And so over the time period of the week, every, you know, the boss would say, every one of you needs to sign up for a time slot to get up there this week so you can get trained on this new C-arm. So normally you just have a couple of techs that are up there nonstop, but you, anybody that's going to eventually touch a C-arm needed to rotate through to get the training. 
the other the other option is to have this app specialist train a couple super users who just become experts in the department and then they're tasked with training all the other um, agents. But back to uh, this particular question, what what are the pros and cons of leaving being a technologist and becoming an app specialist, for example? Um, first off, uh, we'll kind of do a pros and cons. Uh, on the pro side, you're going to have a broader scope, uh, per se, um, of reach. You're going to, you know, as a tech, you're touching, treating, helping one patient at a time. Uh, as an app specialist, you're going to be training the entire uh, ultrasound department on the app. So you're so you can look at it as your ability to affect or train or support uh, that entire community by training that staff. Um, and it's usually in the latest technology. So you're helping to, you know, level up the skill of that local radiology team on the latest equipment to provide the best care for that community. So you're, you know, you're at the forefront of that. Um, so speaking of innovation, it also being an app specialist puts you at the forefront of all the innovation. You know, you're never, that I would think of are sent out to train on the oldest equipment, right? You're always sent out to train on the newest equipment. And so you're going to have to go to classes and seminars, symposiums, RSNA, all the places that are going to have the latest cutting edge stuff. You got to stay on top of that. You got to know what the newest, latest, greatest Doppler color, whatever is in the ultrasound field and know how to explain it in layman's terms if necessary uh, but also to the sonographers in the field as well. So you'll be on the cutting edge of innovation. And then there's this, there's the career growth option as a pro because so in the field as a tech, right, for sonography specifically, you can get trained in general sonography and then you can learn uh, vascular, you can learn echo sonography. Um, really, those are your, those are your, upgrades if you want to call them that now you can take those further and you can do you know echo and then pediatric echo and the neonatal echo and each time you kind of go up that ladder so to speak you're going to make more and more money in the application specialist world you're going to kind of climb that ladder in the company where you may become just kind of the the ground level app specialist and then maybe a second tier app specialist like when you became a tech there's tech one tech two tech three lead supervisor manager director that kind of thing App specialists kind of have a similar structure. Every company's different, but you'll start out as a as a level one app specialist, then you'll be a level two, then maybe level three or a trainer, and then maybe you'll have a, a, your own territory or a larger territory, and then maybe move up to somebody who just looks out over all the other app specialists in a certain territory. So you have a career growth option also in the app specialist field. And then another pro, in my opinion, would be education and training you are constantly going to be getting advanced training on your stuff uh, in your field of choice. Which, you know, you, you went to school for it, you know it, you love it. That's why you do it. You wouldn't be doing it if you didn't love the field of ultrasound. So you'll continue to get additional training and, and education in the field. P probably, you know, I, I don't know how to say ahead of the others, but you, you'll get trained on the lowest, latest, greatest stuff before the field does, because you're the one that's going to go train the field. So, uh, you know, you, you you could have knowledge of things before the general public, uh, meaning, you know, the sonographers out there. Um, and then, you know, stability, I have it in the pros column. I think I've always felt like techs in healthcare are the most stable position, even though it may not feel like it. Uh, you may not feel like your job's secure, but when you when you when you've gone up the ranks, I've gone a system director, and when you see the whole system as a as a whole, you can see that managers, directors, VPs, CEOs, those are the levels that have the biggest targets on them, um, because you can replace a CEO if if you fire a CEO today and you don't replace them by tomorrow. Guess what? That hospital's still running. Everybody's still getting their ultrasounds. Everything's still moving. The cafeteria is still open. But if you fire the night shift ultrasound tax ain't no ultrasounds getting done on that night shift <laughs> unless you unless you offer bribe pay to the day shift but they can't they can't work all day and work all night and work all day so my point is in the app specialist world you you probably have a comparable stability in the job force because they need them out there training i guarantee you the higher ups in 
Airstream, GE, Siemens aren't going to know how to go out and train technologists on how to use the the apps programs or the equipment. So it's 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 I never call them a protected field, but it's what we call the people who keep the lights on. The front line that keeps the lights on are the most needed in the field. So those are your those are the pros in my opinion. Now the uh, the cons I have to put up there the transition challenge because I know personally going you know going from technologist to uh, director or technologist to admin um, you're excited to go into admin you're excited for the new career and the new things that it brings but over time you notice that you're missing that patient interaction you're missing that problem solving that your imaging skills brought to the equation. Uh, you, you're kind of missing the excitement of, you know, when you find something with the probe. Um, so there's there's a transition challenge of letting go of certain things and moving into the new position. Um, but as an app specialist, you're still going to get to touch on a lot of that where, you know, my role going from, from sonographer to admin, I had less hands back in ultrasound than you would as an app specialist. So you're still going to have a lot of hands on. Um, but that is one of the cons. It's going to be less patient interaction. So you're going to get a lot more exposure to the software and to the equipment, but you'll get a lot less variety of patient interaction because you'll still have things to scan, whether they're dummies or models or, or coworkers, or maybe they, maybe they have a uh, free clinic attached to the vendor um, headquarters so that there's actual patients that you can scan, um, you're going to have less patient interaction no matter what transitioning from sonographer to app specialist. And then I have travel next, which, um, you know, I, I actually, I would, is that a pro or a con? You know, everybody's different. Is it a pro to you or a con to you? Um, when it comes to just working eight to five, Monday through Friday or whatever, I'd rather just work near the house uh, drive to work, do my shift, come home, done. In app specialists, you're constantly going to be traveling. So, you, and you may go for a couple of weeks, you know, at a time, three weeks at a time, whatever. You may get sent to Switzerland for training or wherever the Germany or wherever the headquarters is for these big vendors. And you're going to be gone for a few weeks at a time. Now, if you're single, no big, right? But if you have family, a bit bigger of an issue. So travel is something you have to think about when it comes to transitioning from technologist to application specialist. But, you know, even at the worst case scenario, um, it's still kind of exciting to see new places and travel to new places. And and now with all of our technology, you can certainly connect back with family a lot easier than you could back in the old days when you had to call long distance and there was long distance charges and all that. Now you can FaceTime, uh, Zoom, uh, all that kind of stuff and, and still stay really connected. Um, what else? Performance pressure. So as an application specialist, you you are going to be expected to meet certain uh, sales goals. And that's not, I mean, it can kind of translate into that never ending scan more, scan faster, see more patients garbage that we put up with as technologists. But um, sales, it's really, it's really obvious. And because as a tech, you can say, look, boss, I can only go as fast as I can go because if I go too fast, I'm compromising patient safety. That's our safe word, right? That's how we get admin off our backs as a tech. If you make me go faster and cut corners to see more patients, it's compromising patient safety. I might miss something. I might go out of protocol. I might, you might knock me out of step in the things I normally do, and I might miss something. And compromising patient safety is never a good thing. And usually that'll put the screech to all the garbage that admin's trying to do to make you go faster. Well, in sales, it's all tied to the bottom dollar. Not that healthcare is not, because that's exactly what's driving healthcare now. But in sales, application specialists, you're going to have to see so many people, and you're a part of that formula to the sales department. And so you're also, in a way, keeping that client happy after the sale, if you get my drift. So they had this hard sales push. They got this big hospital system to agree to buy 20 ultrasound units or whatever. Part of that sales agreement was app specialists coming out and training their staff. And if you go out and leave a bad taste in their mouth, that's going to reflect on the company as a whole. And those, those buyers, that hospital system may look unfavorably on the vendor because of the apps training that they got. 
And it's kind of, uh, you know, the, the sales team's like, hey, we gave perfect sales. Uh, we got them to buy it. And then the app person went out there and pissed them off. And now they may not buy from us again. So there's going to be pressure applied to your performance as an app specialist. And then a couple more things on the on the cons list is going to be your, your licensing and certification. You may have to get additional licensing and certs for the app specialist job, but you're probably also going to be required to have your sonography license to, to have that job, to get that job as an app specialist, which means you're going to have to continue with your CEUs and all that stuff for your for your uh, for your ultrasound license, which may start to get more and more challenging as you're in the field doing scans less and less. Um, and then last, I have down office based um, application specialist roles are office based, and you may spend uh, a good amount of time at a desk if you're in the corporate environment, which is not nearly as active in the clinical setting. It's going to be a mixture of both worlds, right? You're going to be in classes learning the latest greatest apps. And then you're going to be at your desk, planning all your stuff, doing your homework, whatever, figuring out what it is you have to do, filling out your reports, whatever structure they have for reporting and logging and, and kind of explaining what you've been doing. And then you're going to be out in the field doing the actual training. So you're, you're going to have a mixture of an office job with an uh, apps trainer job with, with you know keeping up with quotas and that kind of thing. So that's my take. I, I can't say that I've known any unhappy app specialists. That's what I'll say. Um, have I seen unhappy sales people? Yes, because as sales ebb and flow, they get uptight and happy and uptight and happy, right? <laughs> COVID hits, everybody's drinking. And, you know, uh, sunny days when we're back out of it. App specialists, they don't make the sales they are the follow-up to the sales. So your job as an app specialist is less tied to that um, constant head bashing of sell more, sell more. Um, what you're going to be asked to do really is try to get to everybody while you're there. And, you know, let's say you you go to one hospital and you're, you're tasked with training 30 x-ray techs or 30 ultrasound techs or whatever, maybe, maybe it's only 10, whatever, but somebody's on vacation and you can't get to them while they're there. You you got to kind of figure a contingency out for that. Are you going to fly back out the following week for that one person? Are you going to train a super user to take care of that one person? Um, maybe you can make some videos for that person, whatever their um, modus operandi is to figure that out. But you are going to have to figure out how to get to every person. And not, not every tech is going to want to come to you either, even though they're supposed to. I'm too busy. I got too much stuff to do. I don't have time to go sit up there and train for an hour on that machine or whatever. So you're going to have to kind of come around all that. So um, I think it's a good option. I think if if when technologists are approaching burnout, uh, which I think catches all of us at some point, the real crux is by that point is when we're making the most money we've ever made. And so it's hard to give up the money to go find something else. So I would say, you know, check out the app specialist that that's what's kind of tugging on your shirt tail, see what it pays, see if it's similar, look for bonuses, look for any kind of incentives that are wrapped up into it, do a cost analysis on how you're going to be able to pay your bills as an app specialist versus, because we know as a tech, we can pick up a call, we can pick up extra shifts. You can't really do that as an app specialist. You kind of get paid what you get paid. You may have some expense accounts that cover, you know, maybe a car or something like that, but um, you, you know, when it comes to apples to apples, it's not, it's more apples to oranges. So uh, make sure you pay attention to the pay and, and always negotiate. Like I've said in my videos, never take the first offer, always counter. Um, and that's my take on app specialist. I, I hope you, uh, I hope you have a, I hope you make a good choice. I hope it makes you happy. I think it's safe to say too, that as long as you exit amicably, from the technologist job. Uh, if you go take that app specialist job and you figure out in six months to a year, whatever that it's not for you and you don't like it, you should be just fine going back into that technologist role. You don't get, you know, you don't get rusty. I've, I've seen people gone for five, 10 years and come back. It takes a little bit of warming up, but just like riding a bike, right? So I hope this helps. Thanks for leaving a comment on my, uh, on my YouTube channel. I appreciate it and see you later.